So if anybody that's before, we'll definitely forward it out to those that missed it. I know there's a few people having issues with, you know, it being virtual and having to deal with this COVID. So we'll start with yourself, sir, uh, with the Naval Academy. Uh, then we'll lead on to the U.S. Military Academy and then lead to myself. And then we'll go from there. Okay. <clears throat> so are we ready to start? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> All right, let me uh, bring up the share screen here. <clears throat> All right, good evening to the audience out there. It's a little different that I, uh, I actually can't see everybody, but uh, I know you're out there. Um, my name's retired Commander Bill Lauper. I am a Blue and Gold Officer Area Coordinator for all of Riverside and San Bernardino counties. Uh, for this year, I'm also covering uh, most of the candidates in the California and the 41st Congressional District. So for the majority of you that are in Congressman Tacano's uh, district, I will be doing your interviews this year. First, I'd like to say uh, congratulations and your uh, decision to seek serving your nation. I think that uh, no matter which academy that you choose uh, as your priority, either way you go, you are choosing to serve your nation and, uh, and, and be a leader. And I think that's what's important. The United States Naval Academy is located in Annapolis, Maryland. <clears throat> As you can see from the photo, it's, uh, it's on, the, on the water, on the waterfront. We do a lot of things around the water, being that we're in the Navy. You'll probably notice the white uniforms. Uh, you'll know that's uh, what the Navy's kind of known for is those choker whites. Um, Naval Academy was named one of the top uh, public institutions in the nation again this year, as most of the service academies are perennially. If you're looking for a small campus feel, feel uh, the, the ratio is about eight to one on student to faculty ratio. So you're not gonna get lost in a large campus like you might uh, at my alma mater at the University of Wisconsin. I guess I should be full disclosure. I, I am not a Naval Academy graduate. I actually went through the Navy ROTC program. Uh, that's not to say that I didn't want to go to the Naval Academy. Yeah, it doesn't always work out for, for everyone. There are lots of ways to serve your nation, whether you go through an academy or choose ROTC. Uh, either way, the result is a commission into the uh, armed services and the chance to lead and serve your nation. Um, but I do believe in the Naval Academy. And the Naval Academy is the Navy's premier institution for creating Naval officers. A lot of people look at the tuition cost and they say, wow, I wanna go there. There's no cost. Well, we get every penny back from you in service over the next five-year minimum commitment. Don't get me wrong there. Uh, but it is a great deal. The nation values you. It is investing in you to be a leader in our nation. Uh, and that is why the, the cost is covered. You will have 100% post-graduation employment. You have a job for five years minimum guarantee. A little bit longer than that if you choose to, to fly. Uh, pilots are typically nine years after they earn their wings. As with all the service academies, there are limited academic majors. So make sure that you know what you're getting into. We tend to prom uh, promote for the uh, engineering. Uh, the engineering background tends to be the priority at the Naval Academy. Again, it's a beautiful campus out there in the yard in Annapolis, Maryland. You're really close to Baltimore and Washington, DC. You'll get to live in uh, Bancroft Hall, largest dormitory in the world. Uh, you got lots of a uh, athletic facilities, sailing, uh, and you have a very diverse campus. The way it's set up, of course, is that we bring in uh, uh, representatives from all of the different congressional districts and our territories to get a broad uh, diversity across the, the nation. Right now, it's about 72% male, 28% female, with about 4,543 midshipmen on campus. What this means is that we bring on about uh, 1,400 new midshipmen each year. <clears throat> what do we offer you? Well, you get an education. You're gonna graduate with a bachelor's of science from a four-year college, 26 majors, a lot of them, them with the, within the STEM field. You have the core curriculum and you also have internship opportunities. Yes, your AP exams and classes can lead you to a higher status in, in your classes. It will not shorten the length of time that you're at the academy. However, it may create opportunities for overseas uh, um, opportunities at other colleges. You do get paid 
All right, you get a monthly stipend of about 1150, which increases each year, depending on your grade level. Uh, that helps to offset some of the cost of computers and things that you might need. Your room, board, and meals are covered. You'll be eating in King Hall with the other midshipmen. Your medical and dental is covered. You get issued personal laptops, your books, all your learning materials. Doesn't this sound easy? I mean, this seems like this is a, a walk in the park. Uh, but the reality is, is, is it is going to be rigorous. You will have summer training experiences. We'll send you out to, uh, to experience ships and aircraft and submarines and the Marine Corps. Upon completion of your four years at the Naval Academy, you will have earned a commission. A commission is an officer needed at the Navy or the United States Marine Corps. Typical pathways include surface warfare, aviation, the SEALs, submarines, Marine Corps, cyber is a new one, uh, cryptologic, mental, medical and dental corps. There's only a handful of those each year as well as intelligence and oceanography. There's the, uh, the majors that you see up on the board. Again, we're looking for the engineering aspect. That's the, uh, the tier one majors. That's uh, what the majority of the uh, midshipmen coming in will be uh, asked to, to study. We have lots of athletics. Everybody will be an athlete. You don't have to be a varsity athlete. Whether you're on intramurals or doing club, uh, you will be active. Uh, so when we do the interviews and we're asking, we wanna know how you stay physically fit and how you're going to fit in on campus. So what is the application process? Hopefully you've already started, all right? The, uh, the deadline uh, is January 31st to wrap up your application. Don't wait till the end. It's always on a rolling uh, admissions process, which means the people that get to 100% complete earlier get a better shot at getting in uh, because after a while, some of those slots start to fill up. That being said, you wanna start early on your nominations process as well, because oftentimes the nomination deadlines are well before the application deadlines. In fact, if you were hoping for Senator Feinstein's uh, nomination this year, you missed the deadline, that was October 1st. So you want to stay on top of the different processes here. If you open up a preliminary application, everybody's a candidate this year. Everybody going to the Naval Academy, everybody that applies will get a candidate number and will have the opportunity to get an interview. You must do the physical fitness assessment, the candidate fitness assessment. Um, you're going to have different uh, letters of recommendation that get turned in, and then uh, separately, you have to apply for a nomination. Everybody needs a nomination. All right, there is no application fee to apply. Boy, it says that, you know, we're tough to get into. But the reality is, is most of the candidates self-deselect because they don't finish the application. Finish the application. That's the only way you're going to have a shot at getting in. We start with about 16,000 that, that do the preliminary application. Normally about 12,000 become official candidates. Like I said, this year, everybody gets to be an official candidate. You have to qualify academically, physically, and medically and you have to obtain a nomination. If you're a triple qualified across the board and you have a nomination, there's an excellent chance that you can compete for an appointment at the United States Naval Academy. About 1,100 receive fully qualified offers of appointment. Others may be offered a chance to attend the Naval Academy prep school. You cannot apply to the prep school. The prep school is kind of a preparatory program for those that the Naval Academy thinks they want, but thinks that an extra year of, uh, of assistance will help that midshipman succeed at the academy. All right, it's kind of like putting them in a holding pattern, getting them some extra tutoring and assistance so that you have a better chance of succeeding once you get to the Naval Academy. Uh, so if the prep school is offered to you, which is often is for athletes, uh, it's a great thing to do as well as the foundation program. Again, for admissions, looking for strong foundations in math and science, there is no minimum GPA, but we are gonna look at the the all-around candidate, we want a well-rounded candidate, strive to be at least in the top 20% of your uh, high school class. Uh, the SAT is highly encouraged, all right? I, we do understand that some people have had their SATs canceled this year, um, so it's not ne necessarily a requirement. However, only a handful of uh, midshipmen were admitted this year who did not take the SAT, so it's in your best interest to get those scores in there that we do super score. So as many times as you can take it, we'll take the best scores that you, that you can get, uh, that you achieve and we'll, we'll move them up that way. All right. Big reasons to apply, full scholarship, guaranteed employment, great location. And once you're done, you got a great job sailing the world, seeing the world adventure, you get leadership and character development and a, a very strong graduation rate. We invest in you. The Navy is investing you in you. We want to see you succeed. We're not looking to fail you. Uh, we want to see you succeed. So it is a strong 
uh, you get a lot of strong encouragement and help. We are on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. Again, the difference with the Navy is you, you can expect to be around the water, you can expect to be at sea. When we say you're gonna see the world, remember that 75% of the world is water. So you will see a lot of the world. All right, thank you very much. So right now for you, sir, we have four questions. What is the recommended SAT slash ACT score to get admitted into the Navy Academy? Well, they, they won't tell you what the, the minimums necessarily are, or what, what the, uh, the encouragement is. You're looking, you're looking at uh, probably close to a, a 1,200 is, is pretty typical. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the, uh, the, uh, the other strengths of the individual. But you are looking at pretty much uh, around a 1,200. The second question is, what if I struggle my academics during my time at the Naval Academy? Are there any consequences? You're going to get lots of help. Um, if that means studying on the weekends and having your peers tutor you and, and work on it, you are going to receive a lot of help to try to get through the Naval Academy. Uh, everybody wants to see you succeed. One team, one fight. Um, so expect to, expect to receive a lot of assistance. It just means you won't spend as much time out on the town as some of the other midshipmen. Uh, the third question is, do you have to serve all eight years of my service obligation? So you're gonna serve at a minimum of five years active duty. Um, that the other three years could be in the reserves, uh, depending on which branch you go into. Uh, again, if you go as a pilot, you're gonna go longer. Uh, the, the, the least requirement is through the surface warfare, which is typically five years of active duty. And the final question is, what other areas the academy looks when they're reviewing my application besides the ones that you just displayed for? All right, so we're looking at your leadership, your responsibility, your community service. We're looking at anything that makes you unique and special. All right, you may have different uh, circumstances in your family that set you apart or that could be special considerations. But for the most part, we're looking for that strong leader in their community, a strong leader in their school, somebody that uh, maybe has great athletic skills. Not everybody's a, an athlete, um, but certainly they need to be physically fit. So overall, we're looking for the well-rounded individual. You know, if you're part of, of scouts or JROTC or Civil Air Patrol or Sea Cadets or you know, any of those types of things, those are all ways to demonstrate leadership, but they're not the only ways to demonstrate leadership. You can always find a way to demonstrate leadership in your school or your community. Of course. Oh, my apologies. My, my light's going off a little bit. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that. So we're going to head over to the Colonel now for the USMA. And then if you have any questions for you again, we'll leave it towards the end of the presentation. See if we can share our screen here. Here we go. Uh, we can see your screen, sir. It's a little blank for some of the pages right now. There we go. They're loaded in, good to go. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Congressman Chicano and, and the staff for, for giving me this opportunity to, to address the prospective candidates and our leaders of tomorrow. Uh, thank you also, ladies and gentlemen, for investing your time in, in uh, being interested in attending the Service Academy night. My name is Tim Mahar. I graduated from the United States Military Academy in uh, 1974, and I'll spare you the, uh, the uh, rigors there. It's uh, 47 years ago. I retired as a colonel after 25 years of uh, service and have been an admissions representative uh, since 1993. I want to echo uh, what Commander Lauper said. When you're talking about the service academies, there are really no bad choices. You have to determine which lifestyle is right for you and which academy will best enable you to accomplish your goals. Now saying that, I will admit that I'm a little bit biased and there are some choices you can make that are better than others. Okay. My presentation will cover these four areas, the West Point experience, what West Point offers, what differentiates West Point and the application highlights. Now just to start off with, West Point is located on the banks of the Hudson River approximately two hours north of New York City. So we're talking about going all the way across country, folks. So the West Point experience, exciting, challenging, fulfilling. Mission of the United States Military Academy is to educate, train, 
and inspire the Corps of Cadets so that each graduate is a commissioned leader of character, committed to the values of duty, honor, country, professional growth throughout a career as an officer in the U.S. Army, and a lifetime of selfless service to the nation. I promise you that your time at West Point will definitely be exciting, challenging, and fulfilling as you see, as you see yourself grow and develop as a leader. What's West Point about? It's choosing a direction of life that places a priority on service to our nation. You'll see the term service and servant leader many times in your cadet career. You'll come to understand that being a leader is more than directing others. It's serving those whom you lead and serving our nation. Now, the education you receive at the United States Military Academy will challenge you, it'll push you, and it'll drive you to achieve and overcome your physical limits. As the cadet prayer says, O oh God, our Father, now searcher of human hearts, encourage us in our endeavor to live above the common level of life. Make us choose the harder right instead of the easier wrong, and never to be content with a half-truth when the whole can be won. It's about challenging yourself well, as much as you can. So what West Point offers, when you graduate, you receive a Bachelor of Science degree, a commission as a second lieutenant in the US Army with a five-year active duty obligation. 90% of those who stay on active duty go on to earn a master's degree. You have an assured job waiting for you, and we have service locations worldwide. And best of all, you'll have some of the best friends you could ever imagine. I'm still in touch with all of my friends after 47 years. So branch opportunities are pretty varied here. We have 18 different branches in the Army to choose from, representing the different specialties, interests, and talents. These range from the combat arms, uh, infantry, armor, aviation, field artillery, to the combat support and combat service support arms, such as engineer, chemical, cyber, military intelligence. And they, they can all lead to subsequent opportunities, such as uh, special forces, psych ops, civil affairs, judge advocate general, corps, that's the uh, legal, and congressional liaison postings. So about West Point, a little bit about the history of my alma mater. Uh, established in 1802 by President Thomas Jefferson, USMA is America's first military academy and school of engineering. In 1817, Colonel Savannah Thayer established a curriculum and had served as a model for both the United States Naval Academy and the United States Air Force Academy. As an aside, Prior to his designation as a military academy, West Point was a point of importance as it sits on a bend in the Hudson River and controls all the northbound and southbound traffic on the river. During the Revolutionary War, the British thought that if they could seize control of West Point, they could divide the colonies and uh, isolate the revolutionaries in Boston and New York from the rest of the colonies and eventually wrest back control. I'm sure you've heard of Benedict Arnold. Well, it was his plan to give the details of the fortifications of West Point to the British. The plot was uncovered with the capture of the British Major Andre and saved General Washington from being cut off from his support. There was a lot of history associated with West Point. And if you're any, in any way, shape or form uh, interested in the history and the American Revolution, et cetera, you'll find it a fantastic and astonishing place to visit. West Point has an amazing legacy of leadership. Um, you can see here a few of the, the military leaders that have graduated from West Point. In addition to these, there are other famous individuals such as Ulysses Grant, who was the commander of Union forces during the Civil War and the 18th president of the United States. There was General Omar Bradley, General Patton of World War II fame, General Schwarzkopf, and astronauts, uh, Frank Borman, Ed White and Charles Collins. Business leaders, James Kimsey, who was the founder of AOL, 
in uh, Bob McDonald, the former CEO of Procter and Gamble. Senator Jack Reed from Rhode Island is a, a uh, West Point graduate and our three Heisman Trophy winners, Doc Blanchard, Davis, and Dawkins. I, I, uh, for some reason, I need to throw this in here. Um, my mom visited uh, hitchhiked from her house down to West Point. We lived in New York at the time when she was uh, in college. And she and two of her friends hitchhiked down to, West, to the Army Navy game. And she actually got a chance to see Davis and Blanchard uh, play in that uh, und undefeated season. So let's uh, go on cadet life here. We'll look at the, the academic environment. There's small class sizes, 15 to 18 people per class. So you have to be prepared every day. There's no place to hide, but on a good sign, the opportunity for personalized instruction is top notch. The United States Military Academy is number four in the nation in Rhodes scholarships and number seven in Marshall scholarships received. 70% of our uh, instructors are military officers. These people know that they are teaching the future leaders of the United States Army, an organization that they've devoted their lives and careers to. So they're intensely interested in ensuring your success. You're not a number and you're not another face in the crowd. West Point offers 36 academic majors and 15 minors. Uh, you will graduate with a bachelor of science degree in one of these 36, 36 uh, majors. And if you can't find something there that you like, um, I don't know what to tell you. And we can go over the four year military journey for West Point. You enter as a plebe, a freshman. You undergo six weeks of cadet basic training in July and August, and then you're uh, into the academic year. The uh, second year as a yearling, as sophomore, you have four weeks of cadet field training at Camp Buckner, which is located about 12 miles away from West Point. And it's called the best summer of your life because you're free of all of uh, the hazing that you had as a plebe. And it's just a great feeling being in the outdoors. As a cow or a junior or a firsty, a senior, you'll have these cadet leadership development training opportunities or troop leader training, or actually being in the training detail, the cadre that leads the cadet basic training and the cadet field training. You can also attend uh, a military qualification schools such as airborne or parachutist training, or possibly a short internship in uh, business or government. In, one of those two summers. There are other broadening opportunities at West Point. You can do semester abroad in several different uh, countries or in other service academies. You can serve internships in the White House or uh, congressional offices or training with industry or other government agencies. And then again, there's the uh, military qualification schools such as Airborne or Aerosol. They're available, but they're very competitive. Uh, it's really tough to get some of these things. So, so what it takes is to join the long gray line. West Point seeks well-rounded candidates who demonstrate excellent academic potential, leadership potential, and overall fitness. So what we're talking about is something that Commander uh, Lauper spoke about is the whole candidate. Um, you must have, uh, have 60% academics uh, demonstrated through your GPA or your SAT or ACT scores. 30% uh, of leadership, which consists of your school official evaluations, your interviews, and the extracurricular activities that you participated in while you're in high school. And 10% fitness. This is the cadet fitness exam. And you'll also need to qualify medically. You'll undergo a, a DOD medical evaluation review board to receive a nomination. Now, West Point, like the other academies, is a two-track. You not only need to be accepted by West Point, but you need to acquire a, a nomination. There are two different ways to do that. There's the service-connected uh, nominations for children of career military or veterans. 
or uh, one thing they don't uh, mention here is uh, children of the uh, Medal of Honor holders are also uh, could uh, get a nomination to West Point. Or you may uh, seek a congressional nomination from your congressional representative, which would be Congressman Takano, any of the two California senators, uh, Senator Feinstein or Senator Padilla, or the vice president, uh, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris. So every office has got their different nomination requirements. They're different, but they're all similar. So you just need to go on uh, and locate your representative and senator on the house.gov or senate.gov. Just Google them. It comes up very easily. Shouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah. Before you apply, you need to ask yourself, are you a leader? And are you mentally tough? Are you physically fit? Are you ready for the challenge? And are you interested in a career as an army officer? Ask yourself, why am I doing this? You can't be doing it for mom, can't be doing it for dad, can't be doing it for your brother or sister that went to West Point, or your grandfather that went to West Point. It's gotta be for you. You've gotta be self-motivated. You have to work through all the difficulties that you're gonna experience. So ask yourself, are you ready to challenge yourself? And some of the top reasons in a recent survey for attending West Point is the desire to be an army officer, yeah. use may's overall reputation, self-development, the academic reputation, or leadership training. If you wanna be a leader, West Point's the place for you. It's the premier leadership school in the nation, if not in the world. That's why I went to West Point, because I wanted to be a leader. Now, for you folks, now they have a summer's leadership experience. This didn't, didn't exist uh, 47 years ago. It's a week at West Point that gives the attendees a full immersion into cadet life. It will be done during your uh, junior summer before you become senior, and you have to apply between January and March of your junior year. Uh, you have to have your standardized test score submitted prior to consideration for attendance. Now, to find out more of the details on this, you should go on to the uh, West Point website, the www.usma.edu. Spend a lot of time there. You can follow us online at West Point Admissions or westpoint.edu slash admissions. So that concludes my presentation. Any questions? So far we have two, and I think we're getting the third one typed out right now. So the okay. first one is how typical is it to get into the first division athletic teams? Um, most of the division one teams like football, uh, a lot of those athletes are recruited. There are a number of walk-ons because we have a small campus. We have the same size as the, uh, the Naval Academy, yeah, about 4,000. Um, it's, uh, I can't speak to do it because I was not a, a division one athlete. I always, uh, uh competed at the company level in our, our intramurals. But uh, it's probably a little bit easier than uh, Notre Dame or, or the University of Wisconsin. <laughs> but- uh, I, Thank you so much, sir. The second question is, what is the GPA West Point looks to consider as a strong candidate? A GPA, I would say you need to be above 3.5. And it depends a lot on the standing in your school and the reputation in your school as to what their academic reputation is. And it did tell me the, the admissions people pay a lot of attention to stuff like that because you can be a 4.0 from a, uh, a small school of, of 20 people. And that doesn't count as much as being a 4.0 from a school of 800 people. Okay. But uh, 3.5 is probably the lower bound on that. Okay, thank you so much, sir. And then the final question is, I've heard that you can continue to apply after the age of 18. Is that true? Yes, you can. You can continue to apply after the age of 18. Uh, it escapes me right now, but I think it's 18 up to the age of 20, but I'm not positive. But yes, you don't, it's not limited to a one time thing. You can do it again. You'll have that opportunity. Then I got a follow up question for the actual Naval commander yourself. They asked me the same question as well. Is the age difference or is it the same around 18 to 20? Yes, you can uh, you can apply uh, 
later. In fact, uh, nearly one third of those who uh, get into the Naval Academy each year are reapplicants. So if you don't get it on the first try, go to school, take hard classes, increase your resume, and try it again. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. So now will be my turn to get the congressional nomination process that we give here for our office. So I mean, the attendants can see what it's like to go from our process, then leading into your guys's. So leave me one second here to pull that up for you guys. This, all right, are we good to go? Is the presentation up? Sweet, so thank you so much everybody that came out tonight. My name is Eddie Jaime. I am the new representative for Congressman Mark Connor's office and I'll be going over the congressional nominations to their academies, also for the Air Force and the Marine Merchants Academy. So this is some of the information that we'll be going over, which is a message from Congressman Takano himself, his nomination goals, any misconceptions you may have when it comes to the nomination process, how applying to the academies will go, the nomination process, both application and the process itself entirely, the interview section that we do and how we decide our decisions and our reasons for the denial. So our message from the Congressman Takano is every year, several dedicated young men and women seek appointments to serve in one of the United States Service Academies. As a representative, I have the distinct honor of nominating young people from the 41st District of California, which include the cities of Moreno Valley, Riverside, Europa Valley and Paris to serve our nation. The service academies are among the top schools in the nation and appointees receive a full scholarship towards their education on the condition of serving as a commissioned officer in the armed forces upon graduation. I am encouraged by the number of bright, talented students that contact my office regarding the nomination and the nomination process. So these are some of the nomination goals, which is we're trying to find the best students in our 41st district that can represent every year. We screen based off eligibility and character, just because you might have better grades than one person, if the other person is displaying more of a moral and ethical type of person that really is what a leader should be, then we will focus more towards them than just the academics. We also seek students who like to see that their commitments are through. We don't want somebody to take the nomination, make it to the school, and then they second guess themselves and then fall out. And we could have given this to somebody else that really wanted and had the drive to complete it from beginning to end. Most importantly, we seek students who will serve honorably and diligently and demonstrate courage and leadership as an academy cadet and as an officer of the United States Armed Forces. So some of the misconceptions that people get when it comes to the nomination process is people generally think that you need to know the congressman, you need to know about his agenda or any of his political views. That's not true. Just you being yourself and actually coming out and reaching out to us is just enough that you need for us to think about your nomination and really help you push into our process. Uh, I can only get nominated to the congressman. That's actually another misconception as well. You have your congressman, your representatives. You can also do something called the VP nomination, which is a very hard and competitive thing. At least 15,000 students that I'm aware of compete for it every year and only a handful actually get selected for it. And I can only receive a nomination to one academy. From us, we honestly try to encourage everybody to nominate for every single one. Just because the Naval Academy doesn't accept you doesn't mean that the Army won't take you because each qualification will be different and each representation of a leader will be different per academy. So that's why we choose all four, nominate for all four, but if you only choose two, then we'll only help you with two. Give me one second, looks like we have an answer. Thank you. Moving on. So applying to the academies, Please make sure when you're applying to the academies, you need to do that first before coming to us, which is called the preliminary, as the commander was earlier referencing that you need to have that in this file. That way we can help you push the nomination forward when it comes to that time. So these are some of the things that you'll be seeing in that process. So I'll give you guys a minute or two just to look over it real quick so I don't have a PowerPoint for you guys to get. All right, that should be enough time. We should, we don't need two minutes on this. Moving on. So the nomination process for us, this is not for the academies, this is for us internally. So usually through April and October, we're trying to do our academy nights 
which is this one's a little bit last minute because of COVID and me taking over as a new representative in August. Uh, next year, hopefully we'll have another representative to do it one in the beginning of this first semester and second semester. So that way there's a little more leeway. Usually for applying to the service academies you have between February and December, as you heard the commander say, the January 31st, correct, sir? is like the last time, but he did mention it is a rolling application. So the sooner you get it in, the better your odds are. There are hundreds and according to him, thousands of applicants every year. So you wanna get your name in the hat as quickly as possible. So for us internally, November 1st is your actual deadline for the application process. We need to have it completed, but we do give you two to three days because we know this year the SATs have been a very big issue and the cancellation that's been going on because of COVID. So we're giving you two, three days to get us those scores so we can help you with this process internally. I'm caveating it a lot because we get a lot of questions afterwards about what's the process for the academy compared to the process for our office. So I apologize that I'm sounding like a broken record, but emphasize it's what I learned in the army. Uh, so after you've completed the initial process, which is turning in the application November 1st, we're gonna do something called the decision in the interviewing section. So we're gonna have a board of a minimum of 13 selected individuals that represent our entire district to go over your application. We try to do our best to be non-biased as possible and reach as many representatives of our community as we can. So you can feel like you're having a fair decision on your actual application process. Do I have any questions? We don't seem to have any, so we're gonna keep moving on. So this is what the process looks like side by side with the member's office, the service academy and the applicants and kind of what it looks like and the overview and grand scheme of things. So us as a service, as the uh, members of office, we have different things that are moving on on different timeframes. Service academies are generally around the same timeframes as you can tell large blocks between here and there. And it's all very minute down to detail for them. So of course, make sure you're on top of it. And then what you guys should be looking like applicants wise to make sure you hit those certain deadlines to match our timeline and match their time. It's a lot of moving parts, but in the end, as both the command and the colonel have said, this is an opportunity that too few and not enough get the opportunity to actually have. Actually, sir, my best friend right now is actually graduating from class of 2022 from USMA. So I'm pretty proud of him now. So quick overview of the nomination packet. So November 1st is our actual deadline. You can mail it to our office, you can email it, or you can drop it off in person. I personally would like you to drop it off in person so we can have them face to face so I can get to see what kind of character you are. That way I can go over you immediately on the spot, like, hey, you're missing this, you're missing that. Let's get those in quickly so we can get you through. And then this is a website you can come complete it on. The website is currently going a little bit under work. We're trying to redo the application process to make it a lot easier for you and to make the packet less redundant and more inclusive and more detailed so we can see what kind of person that you really are. So the minimum that we require is five evaluations slash recommendations. So it can be two evaluations, three recommendations, or two recommendations and three evaluations. Sorry, math is not my top slug. Uh, that's why I cannot do the USM Naval Academy. You guys are too smart for me. Again, a personal statement is going to be a 500 word essay saying why you deserve to be nominated and what you will do after your actual time in the service. Um, we also need your high school transcripts. Please make them official so that we know they haven't been altered. And your SAT and ACTs, we understand that you might be having difficulties getting them, but we'll take the packet, consider it incomplete until you bring us those scores. Do I have any questions? Okay, seems like we don't have any, any side. Let's keep moving on. So you can go on our website to decano.house.gov and look for the Service Academy nominations. It should take you to this webpage. So right now this application is incorrect. We now have a new updated version that I'll be showing you after this brief so that way we can go over it step by step and really knock it out. So after the application process is done on November 1st, we're gonna have a board of selected individuals go over each packet and start nominating who they believe should be the ones to continue on to an interview. So we'll schedule an appointment with you with the staff for the application completeness. Interviews will be conducted by Service Academy nomination boards. Again, congressional staff and Congressman Takano will not looking at it. We want to be as unbiased and have the community feel like they're a part of this nomination process and not feel like one man's in control of the whole thing. Uh, the Service Academy Board consists of alumni, veterans, and educators from the entire community. So Europa Valley, Paris, Moreno Valley, and Riverside. So for the 2021, applicants can be accommodated for Zoom meetings. We would like to do them in person, but if for some reason you cannot make it and you would prefer 
a Zoom meeting, we can set that up for you. Just please be aware that if we're accommodating you, you need to accommodate us by actually attending. We don't want to waste people's time. There are individuals who are taking time out of the day, like the commander and the colonel, to give you these presentations to show you that this is a one in a lifetime opportunity. So the decisions are typically going to be made by the end of December. We wanna get them out quickly before the 31st, so that way your applications in before the ruling applications continue, like the colonel was saying, and the commander himself. Uh, applications must have an open portal, which is the application that he was mentioning as well, preliminaries. And applicants applying to the US Merchant Marine Academy need to notify the staff. Sometimes it doesn't enter into the system in time, so we want you to notify them of the nomination, so that way they're ahead of the game, even if your application isn't in, even though you actually turned it in. You know, military computers aren't the greatest, but they work. So some of the common reasons for our denials is the attending does not align with the mission of the academy. For example, I don't really wanna be in charge of people. You're going to an academy, you're going to a school that is made to create future leaders, and future people that represent and not only are in charge, but are leading us into the next generation to the future. So if you're if you don't want to take care of people, this may not be the best route for you to take. It's going to be hard. You're going to be leading people and you will be making the decisions that can affect other people's lives. Sometimes people are just doing this to be recruited into the sport. Granted, you know, you want to be part of one of the division teams that are there, but that's not the point of it. You will be serving the Corps or you will be serving the Navy, you will be serving the Army, you will be serving the Air Force, you will be serving the Armed Forces afterwards. It's not gonna be just for sports. No interest in military service, I just went over that. Clearly under, underestimated the rigors of the Academy. From what I've heard from my best friend personally, this has been some of the hardest times of his life and he and myself were active duty for four and a half years. When Korea, Fort Bliss, he was in uh, Fort Stewart for a while during a lot of our training and a lot of our deployments. He said this is undeniably one of the hardest things mentally and physically for him. So don't underestimate these academies, they are tough. Uh, the board does not believe a student can last the full term. As you were mentioning earlier, if you don't think you can make it, we don't want to send you. We wanna make sure that the person that's taking our slot, because we're only gifted five per academy, we want them to make sure that they're completing it and representing our district to the fullest potential possible. So this is all my contact information. Please feel free to write it down. You're free to email me, call my, call my office, which is 222-0203, extension 202 at any time. Our office is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. But if you email me and if I'm on for the weekend, I'll definitely reply to you as quickly as I can. Um, unfortunately, I will be getting ready to deploy here soon. So I'm gonna be giving guys, for those that contact me, I'll be giving you my uh, senior case manager who's also in charge of this with me, Ignacio Romero. So thank you so much. Uh, do I have any follow-up questions for the night? So with that being the case, no questions, Commander. Colonel, do you have any closing remarks you guys would like to make for one live final time? Sure. You're applying because you want to serve your nation in whatever capacity the nation needs you, whether it's the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or the Merchant Marine. At the end of the day, uh, my hope for you is that uh, the academy that you choose is a matter of preference and not, uh, not out of necessity, you know, that it's not out of bias. Uh, bloom where you're planted. I have had a commanding officer on one of my ships that was actually a graduate of the United States Air Force Academy and then went into the Navy. That is possible. The Merchant Marine Academy is often undersold because people think that it has to deal with the Marine Corps and they, they tend to shy away from it. Really, it's teaching you how to sail merchants, uh, sh civilian ships at sea. And then at the end of your four years, you can go into any branch of the military and do anything that you like. The options are endless out there. Apply for everything that you possibly can. I was a product of ROTC. I would highly encourage you to apply for the ROTC scholarships for each of the branches as well, because the, the academies can only take so many people. And we oftentimes leave good people out who could be great leaders for our nation. There are other pathways to serve as an officer. Try to look at every opportunity that you can and apply for them. Don't sell yourself short. Thank you. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Uh, sir, Colonel, do you have any closing remarks you'd like to make? I'd like to echo uh, Commander Lauper's uh, 
uh, opinions there, apply for all the military academies. There's no bad choices there. But think about it. Uh, it's got to fit you. It's got to fit your lifestyle. And if you don't want it, don't take away a nomination from somebody else that might. But good luck to all of you out there. Thank you. So at this time, uh, so it's the last 10 minutes. This is where we'll be going over the application process. Thank you so much, representatives. You guys are free to go from here. And this is just now for me and the applicant. So that way we, we can get it face to face time. If you would like to go, you guys are free to go. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. So now that the service can be done, we're just gonna go over the application process very quickly. Uh, that way we can get right on our time, which is 5.30. We didn't wanna go more over than an hour. That way, you know, thank you so much for your time. So please give me one moment while I share that PowerPoint. So for those of you that have already done the, app, the application, this is going to be a little bit different from what you received. So we're going to go over it very quickly. We've now added the cover sheet directly to this. So instead of you having to wait for us to send it to you, you now automatically get it with your application packet. So quickly, your candidate name, so full name. It can be first, middle, last, or last, first, middle, whatever iteration. Just please let us know how you're going to write it. Uh, your phone number, a good email to reach you at. Um, a letter of assurance, your military preparatory academy. This is the part where you will select every single one that you want. And on the next page will be which ones you want in order. So if you want to apply to all of them, check all the boxes. And on the next one, put in preference from one being, excuse me, one being your preferred, four being your least preferred. So we're going to go down here. This is, again, just a cover sheet. We're going to go over all this. So the academy information. So what you're going to do here, you're going to check off. You're going to write each one, one, two, three, or four, one being the one you want to attend the most, four being the least. If you have a pre-candidate file, which we're talking about the preliminary application, which is in their portal already, if so, yes, and what schools you've done it for. And then if it was outside of us, if you apply for a different nomination for a different office, please check one of these boxes. If it was from us, you can ignore this. So basic personal information, very straight standard. Permanent California residence, where you're currently at. Temporary is of where you're gonna be staying, depending on how your situation and living situation is. Your high school information that's required for applicants. So what high school, what graduation year, a high school telephone number that we can reach out to in case we need for verification purposes. Um, your test scores, we understand that your SATs are kind of delayed. We get it. Just we need those in as soon as we can. So that way, if we give you the nomination and you don't have SATs in, we have to tell you that this nomination is diligent on the fact that you are going to be turning in those SATs to the service academies before their time is up. So if you're attending college, you're going to attend what college and you're going to let us know so that way what's your average typically going there. Print, signature, date, very standard. So application for the number process, page three, which is application information. This is your athletics. You want to see what you're doing and how you're doing there. So what grade you were in athletics. If you were in multiple grades, you're going to put like 9, 10, 11 in with a comma and then JV, varsity, corresponding to the grade you were in for that team. And there's many different, if you don't find one in there, we left a small space at the bottom for you to write it in because we understand that there's a lot of different sports out there that schools offer that we don't come across very often, like lacrosse is one of them. So if it's not on here, you can put it at the bottom as number 21, what year and how many years you did it for and whether it was JV or varsity team. This is your extracurricular stuff. This is the stuff they're talking about, JROTC. Uh, I know there's Glee Club, there's Dance Club, there's Drama Club, there's uh, Avid, any any outside schools or any outside programs like uh, 4-H, which is a youth program with the YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Eagle Scouts, um, Junior Adventurers, Junior Explorers, Junior Sheriff Explorers, anything like that. This is the kind of stuff, and this is where we want to see it, okay? And we're going to get down here to the evaluation process. This is the evaluation sheet. You need a minimum two of these or you can have three of them and then two letters of recommendation. The minimum is two evaluations 
and it cannot be from the same representative. We think we would want you to get your evaluations from your current institution, whether it be college or your high school. We'd rather you get the evaluations from them so we can see how you are as a professional and let a recommendation of the people you believe know you best. And the last page is going to be a personal essay, again, a 500 words or less describing why you want to attend a military academy and the goals you have for the military career. So with that being it, thank you so much for attending the Service Academy Night. If you have any questions, please reach out to myself. You guys have all my contact information. Thank you so much for attending and have a really good night.